Hello, uh, I'm uh, Ian Panel from the GSMA. I'm the uh, Chief Engineer. Uh, my responsibilities include all of the technical standardization activities inside the GSMA. And in particular, the work that the GSMA is doing on uh, embedded SIMs, the eSIMs, the UICCs, whichever name takes, particularly takes your fancy. We have seen the first successful commercial rollouts of consumer eSIM management in the variable market segment already beginning of 2016. From your point of view, how do you foresee the adaptation process of the eSIM technology into other consumer market segments? I think um, what, what manufacturers and operators are doing is um, in some ways uh, experimenting a little bit with this technology. Uh, they they realise it's coming and it's going to be very important for them. Uh, it's going to make a, a big difference to devices in, in their form factors and flexibilities. But uh, alongside it, there comes big changes both in production for the uh, for, for the manufacturers, both the, uh, the the device manufacturers and also the sim vendors and, and what they manufacture, and also the processes for the operators. So I see these 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 launches as sort of small scale launches that really allow everybody to learn about what's going on. But uh, in, in the future, I think it'll grow, but uh, this, it's a learning process. The GSMA started back in 2013, the eSIM activities with the focus on M2M. Back in 2014, the RSP work item was kicked off with the focus on the consumer market segment. But in the near future, the different market segments, as we know them today, will merge and overlap. In the eSIM world, we differentiate user-initiated and remote-controlled use cases, but also consumer and M2M. Can you elaborate in more details the GSMA view on the possible migration path for M2M and consumer in the near future? So we, um, we, we, we agree that there's likely to be a, a merger of the two specifications. We publish two at the moment for both M2M, the B2B market, and also for uh, the consumer. And that's obviously a little bit confusing, both for, um, for, for, for everybody in the ecosystem. There are some very grey areas that we see in the future where it's uncertain whether a device would be a, a B2B type device uh, or a, uh, a direct-to-consumer type device. So we need, to, we need to merge these specifications, but we, we need to merge them intelligently so that uh, there can be some flexibility on the EUICCs that you install in the device, so that the EUICC is fit for purpose inside the device. If it's a device that needs um, a, a, a lightweight IUIC, EUICC, so something like a dog collar as a, a simple trivial example, then you wouldn't put something as robust or as um, a, a higher security assurance level uh, as you would if it was going into a smartphone and carrying potentially perhaps payment applications or ticketing applications. The eSIM management is positively impacting the consumer journey in the different market segments. On top of this new relationship management, where do you see the benefits for network operators with eSIM management? Operators um, uh, have, to, have to have some very physical processes to support the current uh, physical SIM card. Uh, and uh, I think the greatest benefits um, in, in eSIM is because you're effectively digitizing that distribution channel um, you're, you're going to introduce a degree of flexibility uh, in that distribution channel and therefore you can provide more of an on-demand service, uh, sort of agile, agilely reacting to whatever the customer demands are. But also you potentially see sort of savings uh, in the uh, distribution channel itself. You don't need to package a, a SIM card to distribute it. You don't need to send anything through the post. Uh, you don't need to store anything in a, in a physical work warehouse. So I see there's, some, there's, there's some, a lot of flexibility that can be gained. There, there were potentially, in the long run, cost savings that come out of this. The end-to-end -end ecosystem for agile connectivity fosters a strong network of interaction of the different players. What is your view on the emerging types of business models between MNOs, OEMs and service companies? I think the, um, the, the eSIM is, a, uh, is another area of evolution of technology that, that, that adds to this pressure on the industry to work more in partnerships. It's not the only driver and there, there are other drivers, but, but it adds to it as well. Um, I suppose that there's some simple examples to think about in terms of how these partnerships would work. Uh, one very simple one is 
just looking at the area of um, how, you, how device subsidies work at the moment. Uh, OEMs manufacture specific devices tied to specific networks and, and retailers have to carry those devices uh, as stock items uh, in, in, in their inventory. And they have to have one for each individual operator they work with. But with eSIM, you could perhaps do that in a more agile way and, and actually configure a device to be working with a particular operator right at the very last moment at the point of sale and have an integration with the, uh, the, manufa the, the device manufacturer and the operators involved to set up the commercial relationships that are required for that. Thanks Ian for having you here and that you kind of uh, shared with us your views on the development of eSIM management in this really challenging environment.